When the player fights monsters in the game, we're going to need to display a lot of messages in the user interface. Whether the player hits the monster, how much damage they do, whether the monster hits the player, how much damage the monster does, and if the player defeats the monster, we need to display messages for how many experience points, how much gold, and what loot items the player receives. So in this lesson, we're going to create a way for the game session object, the view model, to send messages that the view, the user interface, will receive so it can display those on the user interface. This will be done by having the view model raise an event and having the view subscribe to those events. This is also known as the observer design pattern and the publish subscribe design pattern. If you're familiar with creating events and custom event arguments in C-sharp, you can probably just skip the video and go right to putting in the source code. The first thing we need to do is open up mainwindow.xaml. We're going to build a place where we can actually display the messages in the user interface. In the left part of the gameplay section, I've added this new border here with a rich text box control inside it. A rich text box control is kind of like a word processor. We can put text into there and if we want to we can change the font size, whether it's in bold, do things like that. Uh, we're not going to do that for this basic part of the game, but it's a future option that's available to you. In order for the mainwindow.xaml.cs to be able to display the messages, we need to have a name for the rich text box. So here we have this attribute x colon name equals game messages. So when we have our code receive the events, it's going to format that and put that into the rich text box by using its name. We also want to do a little bit of formatting here. Normally there's a lot of extra space between paragraphs in a rich text box because these paragraphs are really going to only be lines. We have this rich text box dot resources and we're going to set the style of it for the paragraph to have a margin of zero. So that way we don't have a lot of extra space between the lines. The next step is in the engine project, create a new event args folder and then create a new class in there called game message event args.cs. We aren't required to have these in an event args folder, but I just like to group these together so we know where they all are inside the project. And here's the code for the game message event args class. It needs to inherit from system.event args. This is the standard event arguments that are used when you raise an event, and we're creating a custom class so we can send some of our own information. In this case, we're going to have a property called message, and this is where we're going to put the message we want displayed. And we have a constructor here that's a pretty simple constructor. When we create a game message event args object, we're going to pass in the message we want displayed, and it's going to set that parameter value to the property. So when our view model wants to send a message event to the UI, it's going to create one of these game message event arg objects with the message and pass that along with the event. Now that we have our custom event args class, we can modify the game session class. The first thing we need to do is create this line 11. We have a public event and its data type here is event handler game message event args and we've named it on message raised. Because this is public, it's going to be visible in other classes, kind of like the current world is, current location, current player. And what this on message raised is going to hold is basically a reference to a function in the view that should be run whenever this message is raised. So our view is going to have a function to handle messages, and we're going to kind of say in the view model, when you raise this event, you should run this function from the view object. This might make a little more sense once we create the event handler in the view, and I'll show you the flow of how an event actually gets raised and how it gets handled. So down on line 160, I have a new function here called raise message. 
and it takes in a string parameter that's the message we want to display in the UI. The only thing this function does is it looks at the on message raised, which we just created up here on line 11. And if there is anything subscribed to the on message raised, it's going to invoke, it's going to call the function and it's going to pass in itself and the new game message event args with the message. So this is our custom event arguments with the information we want to pass along with our event. For this lesson, we're only going to display one message and that's when the player moves to a location if they encounter a new monster there. And we're going to do that inside the setter for the current monster property. So when the player moves to a new location, if the location has monsters, we already have code to get the random monster and assign it to this current monster property. And we're just going to add some new code in here and say if the current monster is not equal to null, so if we're saying there is a monster at this location, we're going to raise a message with an empty string just so we can have a blank line. And then we'll raise another message that says UCA current monster name that's going to get inserted here, here. So if the player moves to the location and there's a snake there, they'll see a message that says, you see a snake here. Now that we have a way to raise the messages, we need to subscribe to it inside the UI. So in the WPF UI project, we need to open up main Inside the constructor of main window, we're going to add line 21 here. We're going to say game session, the view model object, dot on message raised, that's our event. And then we do plus equal on game message raised. This on game message raised is a new function we're going to write here to handle the event. And we do that down on lines 46 through 50. The function takes two parameters. It takes the sender, is an object and it takes a game message event args. So if we go back to our game session where we raise the event, you'll see we're invoking, passing the sender and a new game message event args object. That's what's going to be handled here in the view. And really the only important thing we want is on the game message event args, we want that message property which is right here, e.message. And line 48 says on the game messages rich text box, the one that we created in the XAML, it, for the document, we want to add a new block that's going to be a paragraph, and a run is just kind of a string of text with the message. And then we want to scroll to the end of the game messages rich text box because eventually we'll have a lot of messages in there and we want to make sure the player always sees the last messages. So let's follow the flow here just to make sure we've got it all clear. When the main window is constructed, when it's instantiated, we're going to say game session, the view model, the on message raised event we want to add this on game message raised. That's the function down here to display the message. So inside the game session class, this on message raised event will now have a reference. It's going to have a, a pointer to the function on game message raised. Then when the current monster gets set in the game session object, if the monster is not null, we're going to call the raise message function inside game session. That is going to look to see if there's any subscribers to on message raised. And if so, it's going to run the function that we have a reference to passing the message in a new game message event args. Then the view is going to run this set of code here, which will format the message put it inside our rich text box and scroll to the end. So that's how we're going to communicate between the view model and the view. 
This may seem like a lot of work to display some messages, and there are some simpler ways, but this lets us keep our view disconnected from our view model. So if we ever want to create another view, uh, for example, a Unity game or a uh, console game, then we're not going to have to rewrite the view model communications. We can have the Unity game just subscribe to the event and handle it however it needs to. We can have the console game subscribe to the event and handle it however it needs to. So there's some really powerful advantages to having the code disconnected like this. And now that we have this all in place, let's run the game and test it. Okay, we've got the UI up, and let's move to a new location that has a monster. Here we see the monster, and we see the message in our rich text box. If I move south and move north again, I see another message about the monster that we're encountering. If I go south and go over to the farmer's field, we get a message that there's a rat here. So now we have our messaging in place from the view model to the view. And we're going to use this for all of our messages coming out of the view model. That's all for this lesson. If you have any questions or if you want to get the source code, I'll have a link to the support page in the description of the video. In the next lesson, we'll actually add in the combat controls and start fighting some of the monsters.